Turkey's foreign minister says a deal has been reached with Russia for a nationwide ceasefire in Syria. Also this hour in RT, the outgoing Obama administration is reportedly planning to hit Russia with more sanctions for alleged meddling in November's presidential election, despite no proof being released to support the claims. And... Friends need to tell each other the hard truths. Israelis do not need to be lectured about the importance of peace by foreign leaders. A war of words. America's top diplomat and Israel's prime minister break tradition as John Kerry condemns Israel's settlement expansion in occupied territories. Hello, welcome. It's just gone midday here in Moscow. You're watching RT International. Now, Russia and Turkey have agreed on a nationwide truce plan for Syria, according to Turkey's foreign minister, although we are still waiting for confirmation from the Russian foreign ministry. The proposed deal will exclude terrorist organisations. Turkey's foreign minister told journalists that two texts are ready in which the plan has been laid out. With the details, Ili Petrenka spoke with Dan Hawkins. Mevlut Cavusoglu said that two documents have been prepared. One is a political solution, and the other one is concerning the ceasefire itself. It's also been reported that if the ceasefire deal indeed gets struck, then Ankara and Moscow could act as guarantors to it. And that really brings us back to the statement that was made by Sergei Lavrov, the Russian foreign minister, mm. when exactly one week ago he was meeting his counterparts from Iran and Turkey and Moscow. Iran, Russia and Turkey are ready to contribute to the agreement between the Syrian government and the opposition and to act as its guarantors. Well, this certainly looks like a new format shaping out here, a new group of uh, mediators, but what are the actual prospects here uh, for a long-term solution? Well, really, this trio does look promising for several reasons. A, they are, first of all, key players in the region with links to a wide range of conflicting sides in Syria. Now, B, the three sides have shown the much-needed eagerness to really move forward in that peace process. Russia, Turkey, and Iran, it was them that helped to resolve the Aleppo situation. I'm not talking about the taking over of eastern Aleppo by the Syrian government forces, but rather the huge humanitarian operation which involved the evacuations of civilians, also escorting the rebels from that part of the city. And the U.S. has been a key player so far in these negotiations, but they're absent from these latest round of talks. Well, yes, and if this ceasefire really succeeds, then it's going to serve as a huge reputational blow mm -hmm. for the U.S. that has played an instrumental role in the previous peace efforts in Syria that generally have uh, proved to be a failure. And uh, you see, already uh, when a week ago the foreign ministers of Russia and Iran and Turkey were meeting in Moscow, questions were being asked about America's role here. Take a listen. Mr. Kerry doesn't see it as a snub. No, no, the secretary doesn't see this as a snub at all. Does he not at least feel the U.S. is being sidelined, if not excluded, from what was something the U.S. was leading on? We are not e excluded. We are not being well, sidelined. And we are. Note is quite different from and we, his role before. And we are still leading. Right now, this leadership that you're speaking of is all past tense. Is that not true? Uh, I, I would disagree. The only thing that I can add on top of that is that there's a new meeting for Syria planned in Kazakhstan's Astana. That's where Moscow, Ankara and Tehran will be present, but uh, not the U.S. Again, here in RT, we're closely monitoring all the latest peace efforts on Syria. Well, the UN Special Envoy to Syria, Stefan de Mistura, has shown his support for the so-called Troika meeting in Moscow and also expressed the UN's readiness to facilitate their plans, according to Russia's foreign ministry. Uh, the new Syrian coalition consisting of Russia, Iran and Turkey has already contributed uh, to the pullout of militants from the city of Aleppo. They've also put in motion a draft roadmap for a political solution in Syria in an attempt to bring an end to years of devastating war. Well, that's why the international the National Syria Support Group, which includes over 20 countries and was established over a year ago, has failed to find a plausible solution for the war-torn country. I'm not able to report uh, any tangible progress in those talks. Uh, they do continue. 
As foreign ministers from the Troika Group met in Moscow to find a solution for the Syrian crisis, the U.S. was a notable absentee from the talks. A former Turkish ambassador to America said that the new three-way alliance could mean Washington is no longer needed in the peace process. When you combine these forces, Russia, Turkey and Iran, uh, for a ceasefire and for an eventual settlement uh, in uh, Syria, uh, you may not need uh, the U.S. all that much. Uh, I think uh, uh, Russia uh, has uh, taken an initiative uh, uh, way beyond uh, just uh, uh, declaring a nation-wide uh, ceasefire. Uh, Russia has done this with the U.S. Uh, before, but the inclusion uh, of Turkey and Iran in this effort uh, makes a, a, a whole world of difference because these are Iran and Turkey are two leading regional powers uh, with uh, uh, absolutely uh, great influence uh, over the flow of events in Syria. Well, as mentioned, one of the successes of the new coalition was to liberate the Syrian city of Aleppo from terrorists who tortured and abused residents trapped in their territories. The Russian military is now carrying out a massive demining operation to rid the eastern part of the city from countless booby traps left by rebels as they were fleeing the city. While working in the liberated areas, troops have also discovered mass graves of civilians who were tortured before being killed. Artis Maria Fanoshina has just returned from her tenth trip to the war-ravaged country and shared with us the most powerful moments of the conflict. I've been covering the Syrian war since its beginning in 2011. So we are right now in the center of Malula village. Go. Okay, clear. We've always tried to focus on the effect the war has had on the people. On my tenth time in Syria, we decided to report on the fate of Syrian children. We've been facing numerous challenges, but perhaps the biggest of all was how to make a choice. Out of all these human tragedies, out of all the tragic stories of kids of Syria, how to pick up four or five to show because they are too many. We met Mahmoud in Aleppo. Six year old, he was born without arms. And a year ago, when a mine detonated on a playground that used to be a front line, he also lost both of his legs. When we were filming, all adults in the room were in tears. What's left from Mahmoud was just a part of his body. But he was smiling. He was having fun with his elder cousin. The two boys were playing together as if nothing happened. And this is what you can learn from the Syrian kids. While taking so much, they're still able to give. And they give hope that adults lost. On the streets of Aleppo, we also met Ahmed. It's freezing, and this 12-year-old boy is searching for fuel to warm his house and cook food. His feet are soaking wet and cold. He still manages to smile. His life has been turned upside down by a war he had nothing to do with. When the conflict broke out, he was just six and should have been starting the first grade in school. Because of the constant fighting, he was unable to go to school and now, six years later, feels too old to join the younger children. So instead, he walks the streets looking for fuel. This is a familiar story today for many children in Syria, from both sides. But they don't forget how to love, how to be thankful for the little they have. And that gives hope that Syria's future will be brighter than Syria's present.